let's take a look at y equals 4 sine of 2 pi x plus 3. Now, I know for sure that this has a phase shift because you are evaluating the sine of something and you got stuff in parentheses. It's not just the x. You got x plus something in the parentheses. So that tells you this has a phase shift. First thing you want to do if you know you have a phase shift is factor your omega out. And the omega is going to be 2 pi. So factor a 2 pi out. That's going to leave you with x for the first term. Now, the problem with factoring out your omega with every problem is that most of the time you can't, or all the time, you can't factor out like a 2 pi out of 3. So the way that you do that is you just say 3 divided by 2 pi. Whatever you factor out, you put on the denominator here. All right, now let's figure out the amplitude, which is the absolute value of 4. So that's my high points and low points. The period, I can draw one complete graph, 2 pi divided by omega. Well, I factored out a 2 pi. So the period here is one unit. So I'm going to be able to draw this entire graph in just one unit, one complete unit. All right, the phase shift, which is also going to be the starting point. is negative 3 over 2 pi. It's negative because there's a plus in front. You take the opposite sign of what's in front and that will tell you whether your phase shift is positive or negative. So my phase shift is going to be negative 3 over 2 pi. My end point, I call it the ending point, that's going to be the phase shift plus the period. So the phase shift is negative 3 over 2 pi. The period is a positive 1. So you have to say plus 1. Now I'm going to write out all of my subintervals. After I do that, then I'll show you how you can use a calculator to get some decimal approximations to help you a little bit with your graph. So let's say that draw our four subintervals. I did not draw the interval for the entire graph. I'll do that right now. I'll draw it right here. The interval for the entire graph is going to be from negative 3 over 2 pi to negative 3 over 2 pi plus 1. Okay. This first subinterval is going to start at negative 3 over 2 pi. The last subinterval will end at negative 3 over 2 pi plus 1. All right. So negative 3 over 2 pi plus what? Well, we have to come back and look at the period. You take the period and divide by 4. So the period divided by 4 is 1 fourth. That's what we're going to add to each significant value to get the next significant value. So I'm going to say negative 3 over 2 pi plus 1 fourth. I start my next subinterval with that same value and then add 1 fourth again. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half. So negative 3 over 2 pi plus 1 half. All right, add 1 fourth again. This be negative 3 over 2 pi plus 3 fourths and if you add 1 fourth again 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is 1 alright so now be really tough to figure out where all these values were if you don't get a decimal approximation so what you want to do get your calculator use the Windows calculator. All right, and get a decimal approximation of the very first significant value. 
the the uh, starting point, the phase shift. So I'm going to say negative um, 3 divided by 2 divided by pi. Alright, so this first point is about negative 0.48. I'm just going to write out, you know, approximation about negative 0.48. Alright, then add one fourth to that. One fourth as a decimal is 0.25. I'll give you the same thing. Alright, so if I add 0.25 to that, I have about negative 0.23. Alright, so this is about negative 0.23. All these again are approximations. So if you add 0.25 to that, this is going to be negative 0 0.02. That's almost right at zero. Okay. That's negative 0 0.02. This next point will be negative 0 0.0, I mean 0.27. Not negative. Sorry, we went to positive right here. That's all positive. Now we're on the right side of zero. That's positive. Positive. 0.27. And then the last point, if you add 0.25 again, that's going to be about a positive 0.52. So, key point that you need to remember these two values are negative so they're going to be on the left side of zero then we start in with the positive key points so those three are going to be on the right side of zero you know and, and this this third significant point it's not very far past zero I mean it's basically right at zero just a little bit to the right okay so let's see what this would look like graphed and the graph that is uh, provided on your test does have a, a good scale to it. It has four tick marks and then it has the number one. Four tick marks with the number negative one on the left side. So it's a good scale provided. Um, if you draw your own x-y axis, all right, then I'm going to have one is zero, I'm going to have one right here, one right here. So this one's going to be about negative 0.48. This one's going to be about negative 0.23. Then we have zero, one really close to zero there. All right. Then I'm going to have positive 0.27 and positive 0.52. All those are approximations. Now I just use the amplitude to give me my high point. So my high point is going to be 4. My low point is going to be negative 4. And I have to know how does the basic sine curve look. Sine curve starts out on the axis. At the next significant point you have a high point. At the next significant point you cross. At the next significant point you have a low point and at the last significant point you cross. Right. So that's a rough sketch of y equals 4 sine 2 pi x plus 3. Like I said, that's the toughest problem uh, on the test. The next one is y equals 5 sine of 3x minus pi. So the first thing you want to do is, or you see, you notice there's a phase shift. So the first thing you want to do is uh, rewrite the function. 
So this is 5 sine of 3 times x minus pi over 3. Alright, let me go back and show you what I did. I factored the 3 out, so that leaves me with x. This last term here is pi, so I can't factor a 3 out of that. The way that I adjust that is I divide it by the 3 that I'm factoring out. Now, I can tell that the amplitude is 5. The period, 2 pi divided by whatever I factored out, so 2 pi divided by 3. The phase shift. It's going to be my new starting point. I have minus pi over 3. So a minus in front gives me a positive phase shift. So I'm going to start at positive pi over 3. My ending point. I'm going to end at starting point plus my period. So I'm going to start at pi over 3. And my period gives me the length of my graph. So if I'm starting at pi over 3 and add 2 pi over 3 to that, that'll give me where my graph's going to end. Which is 3 pi over 3 or just pi. So I know that one complete period can be drawn between pi over 3 and pi. All right. Now you want to come up with these or formulate the subintervals. There's four subintervals for the graphs of sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant. All right. We know we're going to start at pi over 3 and we're going to end at pi. Now, to figure out what I add to my first significant point to get my next significant point, you take your period and divide by 4. Now remember, dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. We always do that to get the value we add to the first significant point to get the next significant point. So that would give us 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So I could take pi over 6 and add that to pi over 3. That will give me my next significant point. So. If you need to get a common denominator, do all that with your fractions, do that. But uh, pi over 6 plus pi over 3 is going to give you pi over 2. And so you start the next subinterval with the last significant point. Add pi over 6 to that. Get a common denominator of 6. That would be 3 pi over 6 plus 1 pi over 6. That's 4 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. Two pi over 3, or 4 pi over 6 plus 1 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. Now here's where we can check ourselves and make sure that we've been doing things right. 5 pi over 6 plus 1 pi over 6 is 6 pi over 6 which is the same as pi. So that kind of tells us that we, we're going in the right direction. Now, we have significant points at pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and pi. So when we draw this, that's going to be the points on our x-axis. So 
we're going to make our scale. So the first point here, that's where I'm going to start. That's pi over 3. The next significant point is pi over 2. The next significant point is 2 pi over 3. The next significant point is 5 pi over 6. And the last significant point is pi. Now, you need to recall the basic shape of the sine curve, because this is a graph for sine. All right, so here is where I start. My high point is going to be 5. My low point is going to be negative 5. And sine always starts on the x-axis. It's not shifted up or down. So I'll start on the x-axis. The next significant point, I have a high point. The next significant point, I have a low point. Is that right? No. All right. Cross the x-axis. The next significant point, I have a low point. The last significant point, I cross. Connect the dots with smooth curves, and you have your graph. If you want to adjust your axis, your x-axis, to be like the way on the test, just know that it's going to be compressed big time. You're going to want to draw the entire graph between pi over 3 and pi. Alright, now this is a cosine graph. Notice there's a phase shift. So I need to rewrite this. I want to start out by factoring out a 3. That's my omega. That's going to leave me with x plus. Now, to factor a 3 out of pi over 2, I say pi over 2 divided by 3. So pi over 2 times 1 third that's pi over 6. Alright. Now, from, from this equation, it's easier to get all of my information. The amplitude is the absolute value of 4, which is 4. The period is 2 pi divided by omega. Omega is what we factored out. That's going to be the 3. The phase shift. going to be the starting point. Look back here and see we have plus pi over 6. So that means we're going to have a negative phase shift. Negative pi over 6. That's our starting point. Our ending point is going to be the phase shift plus the period. Our starting point plus the length of the graph. That's what that is. Now, make sure that you're careful when you add these two fractions together. You get a common denominator of 6. It's going to be negative 1 pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 6. So that's 3 pi over 6 or pi over 2. So we're going to end this graph at pi over 2. One complete period for this graph will be from negative pi over 6 to pi over 2. Alright, so we'll make our four subintervals. We know that the starting point is negative pi over 6, the ending point, pi over 2. To figure out what we add to each significant point to get the next significant point, you take the period and divide by 4. So 2 pi over 3 divided by 4. Dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. So 
that's going to give me pi over 6. So I'm going to add pi over 6 each time to each significant point to get the next significant point. My first significant point is negative pi over 6. Negative pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 0. 0 plus pi over 6 is pi over 6. Pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. And 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3 plus pi over 6 is 3 pi over 6 or pi over 2. So that kind of, that's the check to let you know that you've been doing this right. All right, this is a cosine graph. My amplitude is 4. So I can do a rough sketch real quick. High points 4, low points negative 4. I have one negative key point, so I need to make sure that on the left side here, left side of 0, I do have a negative pi over 6. All right, so that's a significant point there. The next significant point is 0. The next significant point is pi over 6. The next significant point is pi over 3. And the last significant point is pi over 2. Now this is the cosine graph. This is y equals 4 cosine of 3x plus pi over 2. All right, so the basic cosine graph, we remember, starts at a high point. So we're going to start at a high point. Next significant point, we cross. Next significant point, we have a low point. The next significant point, we cross. And the last significant point, we have a high point. Now, connect these points with smooth curves. Probably not the best graph, but... So connect the points with smooth curves. And there you go. That's a rough sketch of y equals 4 cosine 3x plus pi over 2. Alright, on number 19, this is matching. So what you're going to do on this, you're either, you're probably just going to want to write the number on the graph. Alright, so the four graphs that are provided will match up with the four equations. Two of the graphs are sine graphs, two of the graphs are cosine graphs. So you need to know that the basic shape of y equals sine of x looks like this. The basic shape of y equals cosine of x looks like this. So you can match those two graphs up pretty quick. You can see number one is C. And number two is A. Alright, the two that you're left with are y equals negative sine of x and y equals negative cosine of x. That's going to flip the graphs. So take the graph I have up here for y equals sine of x and flip it. That gives you B. Take the graph I have up here for cosine of x and flip it. That gives you d, as in delta. Number 20, the last problem on the test is number 20. And we have two sine graphs and two cosine graphs. The only difference is between this problem and the last problem is we do have to worry about uh, amplitude and period here. Well, the main thing is that we can figure out 
the period for each one of these. The amplitude is the same on all four graphs. Here's my four equations. Alright, so now if we look at what's in front of the x, you see two of them have a one-half in front and two of the equations have a two in front. So for the two with the one-half in front, their period both of those it's going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half or 4 pi. So that's going to stretch the graph tremendously. So if you draw one complete period of 4 pi just know that I mean it's going to be stretched out probably just going to be just enough to fit on the graph. For these other two the period is 2 pi divided by omega, which is 2. So the period here is pi. So it's going to be compressed. There's going to be a lot of periods drawn on the graph. Alright. So that's what I would use to help me. Um, if you look, B and C are both stretched out pretty far. So B and C is going to have to be either Y equals negative 3 sine 1 half X a y equals positive 3 cosine 1 half x because the graphs are stretched. So uh, let's identify the cosine graph because it's positive. Remember cosine starts at a high point. So b starts at a high point at 0. So b is y equals 3 cosine 1 half x. Well that leaves c to be y equals negative 3 sine 1 half x. But how could I tell if I didn't know that the other one was what it was? Well, the negative 3 flips the graph. So instead of going up first, you go down, up, down. So it flips the graph. Um, if you look from 0, that's where that would start. That's the way I drew that. Then going down from 0... That would be C. Alright, the other two graphs are y equals 3 sine 2x and y equals 3 cosine 2x. So A and D are those two. So the way that you could do that is I would find the positive one again. So C at 0, do we have a high point at 3? We do for D, so it has to be D. The only graph left then would be A for the first one. 